Dave Weinberg, longtime Eagles beat writer from the press of Atlantic City. He joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And Dave, I guess it's a little bit of a surprise because we keep getting told that you can't, I mean, not even deactivate him on game day because he's so important in like the return game and special teams. So are you a little surprised that they decide today of all days, hey, Mac, we're going to get rid of you? Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. Um, oh, he doesn't have a catch in the last two months, but still, he, um, it's not important. Yeah, he, 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 he was viewed as a he was viewed as a as a pretty good core special teams guy. That's why they drafted him, actually. And um, you know, Doug kept saying, "Well, you know, he does a lot of things that uh, that go unnoticed, I guess, as far as like blocking downfield and all that." But when you're a wide receiver, you got to catch the ball once in a while. So I guess he just got tired of waiting. Didn't help that he got called for like an illegal block this week, right? Yeah, that might have done it. <laughs> right. Yep, that's true too. Yep. Yep. So I mean, he essentially uh, he gets cut today. But I, I mean, I know we all thought they were going to win that game, and we're all shocked and surprised that they lost. But are you so shocked and surprised that you don't think they can pick up the pieces, move past this, and get themselves back together over these four games? Uh. No, I mean, they look terrible on Sunday, no question about it. But Doug Peterson just has this uh, odd way of rallying, rallying that team just when you think that they're down and out. And so, you know, given that, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go 4-0 and down the stretch. Now, whether that's going to translate in anything, I still don't think they'll do much in the playoffs. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if they win the NFC East. You know, that's just the way Doug is. What are your thoughts on Doug, you know, speaking of Mr. Peterson? Because <laughs> I, I said this earlier, it's like, I don't know this for a fact. I'm just throwing things at the wall, seeing if they stick. But I wonder if he's relying too much on past seasons and last season. And we've been in this situation before. And it's not the same team. It's not the same group of guys, although the key guys are there. But do you think he could maybe be handling this wrong? I guess we'll find out. But what are your thoughts on how he reacted to this loss against Miami. Yeah, this is like the first time I've ever been, I guess, disappointed in, in what he's doing. Um, you know, he just didn't seem, you know, the, the fact that you said, you know, they didn't want it more, they just outplayed us. So you're outplayed by the Miami Dolphins and you have, so you have a problem. And um, he was just like real snarky, uh, very defensive. And that's usually not like him. I mean, he's usually, you know, pretty forthright and honest and, you know, he's the first one that will tell you, you know, the team didn't play well. But, um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I think he could have be, I think he could be handling it a little better, to be honest, if that's what you're asking, yeah. Yeah. Do you think his conf confidence could be wavering at all? Um, confidence in the team? Yeah, just uh, the team or himself. I mean, because I agree. I, I saw the same things. Yeah, I'm not, not in himself. I mean, Doug's been around a really long time, and he's been yeah. through the ups and downs yeah. in this league as a you know a player and a coach. So I still think he believes in himself and what he's preaching and what he's teaching. Um, I'm just a little concerned about you know he keeps trying to throw it on the leaders uh, to pick up the pace, and they just don't seem to be doing that right now. Um, this locker room seems to be uh, a little disjointed. You know, I, nobody's pointing fingers, but. You know, you hear rumblings here and there. People aren't, you know, there was like five guys who didn't even talk after the game on Sunday. Um, and that's not like, you know, guys like Jason Kelsey or, or you know, whoever that, you know, they're usually they're the first ones that you go to in the locker room. And they're always, you know, willing to answer any questions, uh, no matter how bad the loss it is. So for them to be, um, you, know, you know, blowing off the media, that, that kind of sends like a, a little bit of an alarm to me. Dave Weinberg for the Press of Atlantic City covers the Eagles. They get ready for the Giants and, you know, their defense had been playing well, Dave. They finally seemed like they got their defense fixed. They had a lot of injuries. Those guys came back. They started to play well, and then they imploded yes, uh, Sunday. So who are they defensively? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, I mean, they played lights out against the, the Patriots and the Seahawks. You think they're, you know, legit? You get Jane and Mills and, and they played well against and, Buffalo and, and Chicago. I mean, they had a four game stretch where they played right, pretty right. good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to fall apart against the Dolphins of all teams, um, you know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is because he did it to you last year with Tampa. So you think you'd be prepared for it. And I don't know. I guess they got a little, maybe they got a little confident once they got the lead. I don't, I don't know what it was, but yeah, that's, um, 
I, I, don't, I don't know the identity of this defense now. Um, I, I thought that they were they turned the corner and that they were really rolling, but now I'm not so sure. Right. We thought we were getting – I felt I was getting – like I felt comfortable that, all right, defensively they're going to keep you in the games. You should be able to compete. My problem was with the offense. They scored 31 last week. Did they show you enough that makes you feel like, all right, the offense is now turning the corner <laughs> – <laughs> to maybe some, to the positive to back to some positivity. I don't even know where to go with that offense. Yeah, well, you score thirty-one, you should win the game. I mean, so that's a that's a positive. Uh, they had Lane Johnson and Brandon Books back. Um, Jeffrey and Aguilar played. Um, I think Ertz he seemed to be really hampered by that by that hamstring injury. But it was just Doug's play calling that befuddled me. Why you stop running the ball after you have a two touchdown lead? That seems to be the time when you would run the ball to try to you know take time off the clock and move the chains a little bit. Maybe he just doesn't think JHI has anything left. But still, to throw forty seven passes when you're you know clearly in control of the game that just made that made zero sense to me. What about Jordan Howard? What's going on with him? Yeah, I'm a little worried about that. I mean, I'm yeah. worried, but a little concerned because he, you know, a stinger doesn't usually last this long. There's got to be something more to it than that. I think this is what three games now he's missed in a row. Um, they got to find something there. I mean, obviously, they don't trust Miles Sanders enough to carry the load. Jay Ajayi has nothing left. I don't think Boston Scott's the answer. So they they got to hope that Jordan Howard's going to come back, you know, relatively soon if they want to make a pusher. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that you mentioned that you know they didn't. I, I, the run the ball thing we've been talking about that you know it seems like yearly and like you know, we look at different yeah, games yeah. um you know at this stage of the season um do they trust miles sanders to kind of carry the ball that much is that the problem there maybe yeah i think so um uh, it's, it's pretty evident they don't give him the ball you know like like you would a, a workhorse you know bell cow if you will um I know they think a lot of his ability and his versatility. I mean, he's great, you know, out of the backfield, too, as a receiver. And he's a dynamic playmaker. I guess maybe they just don't think he's that um, that tough physical runner, I guess, that, you know, can move the chains, can, you know, keep the ball moving no matter what, uh, you know, between the tackles. I mean, Jordan Howard is definitely that. That's how he was uh, – he had a lot of success, you know, before he got hurt. So, uh, I guess we're just, like, planning on hoping or hoping that, uh, that Jordan's going to come back relatively soon. There is a lot of talk, and I was – in the middle of it after the game last week with Carson Wentz. How do you think he played in Miami? I mean, we said they put up 31, so you should win that game. But what have you seen from him specifically? And are you confident that he can, you know, get the job done here the rest of the way? Uh, no, I'm not confident. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the statistics suggest that he's having a decent season, but you got to look beyond the numbers. It just doesn't seem like he's not, he's clearly not the same player he was two years ago. Uh, I, I think he's even like regressed during this season. There's just something about, you know, you, you're throwing a, a you know a short uh, outlet pass ten feet over the guy's head. Um, he, he just doesn't seem to have the. Um, I don't know if it's, he just doesn't have the confidence in his receiving core. Uh, other than Zach Gers, it doesn't seem like he trusts anybody and tries to do too much himself. Um, I just don't. I don't know what it is with him. I, I he just seems like he, maybe he's, he's even lost confidence in himself a little bit, which is kind of difficult to believe, but um, he, he's clearly not the same player that he was. All right, we got Eagles-Giants coming up this weekend, and obviously the Giants, they might be worse in a worse spot right now uh, <laughs> than Miami is. And if you were to kind of forecast what you think might happen over these next four after what you saw, here's the problem, Dave. I think too many people are saying, well, you lost to the Dolphins. That means you can't do anything else. But as you know, you've covered this league a long time. It's so week to week. What happened last Sunday really has no bearing on what happens the following Sunday here. So do you think that they will pick up the pieces and make these next four games interesting? Yes, I do. Uh, based on, you know, how Doug has, has uh, done this the last couple of years, based on the history of the team. And like you said, this league is a it's very much a week to week thing. You can never uh, really count anybody else that maybe the Bengals, I guess. But it's, <laughs> um, yeah, the Gi I mean, the Giants are floundering. But they always seem to play the Eagles pretty tough. Uh, Pat Shermer was on the staff in, in Philly for a while, so he kind of knows the team, I guess. And it's um, I, I expect the Eagles to get it done, but I don't think it's going to be easy. But I, I do think that they'll win at least three of the next four. That Cowboys game, I just, just I'm not sure about that one. 
interestingly enough, you know, uh, Dallas has had their own problems. They'll play Thursday night. They'll have 10 days off, by the way, to get ready uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles. And, of course, you can hear the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. Cowboys and Bears Thursday night. Eagles and Giants Monday night. Dave Weinberg from the Press of Atlantic City, of course, longtime Eagle beat writer, will be there. And, of course, the Eagles-Giants game, a big one for the Eagles. Dallas and Bears, big one for them. We'll see how it all shakes out the next time we talk to Dave next week. Thanks, pal. Uh, Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it.